with user awareness uh, on uh, public blockchain privacy issues and uh, privacy enhancing tools. We focused on on the UTXO based blockchain, uh, focusing on Bitcoin, and uh, we then uh, actually examined their preferences uh, on uh, using. A, privacy add-on techniques on top of Bitcoin or using built-in privacy in privacy coins. Uh, actually, I have uh, lots of slides on uh, privacy issues in Bitcoin uh, that I can skip it in Monero card as uh, most of the people <laughs> Uh, are aware of uh, those issues maybe uh, but uh, I just uh, uh, mentioned some of the uh, issues as you know that uh, Sarah Michael John uh, was the first one uh, showed in uh, a scientific paper that there are uh, privacy issues around Bitcoin they clustered Bitcoin addresses and then they could tag the addresses and uh, create a uh, transaction graphs and back then uh, privacy techniques emerged uh, in Bitcoin and also in uh, built-in uh, privacy coins and then uh, in our research we are going uh, to answer uh, two main questions. The first one is uh, to what extent are users aware of privacy issues and privacy enhancing technologies? And the second one is what preferences do the users have for privacy enhancing technologies? And we uh, elaborated this question to do they prefer using add-on privacy techniques on top of Bitcoin? or built-in features in privacy coins such as Monero? Or are they willing to use privacy preserving te techniques despite the higher fees and longer transaction time? Uh, and do they also trust uh, third-party privacy preserving services in Bitcoin? And uh, uh, we have a uh, to run pilots, uh, we also consulted uh, with uh, the le our legal office and uh, the usability researcher uh, for providing our questionnaire. Uh, and then we defined a logic for our questionnaire to be sure that, for instance, if a user told that I'm not familiar at all with the cryptocurrency, uh, she will jump into the uh, end of the survey as she could uh, fake on the answers. And then uh, for the validity and reliability of our uh, research, we had uh, five exclusion criteria, no knowledge of cryptocurrency, partially replied to the questionnaire, wrongly answer to the quality control question, and selecting valid uh, answers. Uh, in total, we had 101 respondents, and uh, we eliminated 43 participants by this exclusion criteria. And we also have qualitative research uh, with 12 users and 10 males, two females. And, uh, but it was 16% at least uh, more than the females in the room and also uh, 58 in our quantitative part. And here is a simple Bitcoin transaction and you are familiar with that, that uh, Bitcoin has uh, can can have uh, lots of inputs, and then uh, whenever uh, you spend money, uh, the um, the remainder will be back to you by change address. So, one of the main questions was from the users was uh, how they think uh, about Bitcoin anonymity, and what do you think? Uh, is the first statement right or is the second question is right? First, who will say first and who will say second? Perfect. Uh, no one, uh, actually, none of these uh, statements are totally true. For sure, there are uh, lots of privacy te techniques over Bitcoin and then uh, 
in the first years, maybe uh, most of the people have been understanding that Bitcoin is anonymous, but not. Uh, and yeah, you can see lots of uh, transaction graphs and uh, we also ask users which the anonymization techniques in Bitcoin uh, they are aware. And interestingly, address reuse and uh, also uh, address reuse uh, was one of the main reported uh, the anonymization things, uh, which shows education, education by wallets and the importance of education uh, by community uh, and. Here I, I just listed some of the de-anonymization attacks, uh, heuristics, flow analysis, side channel attacks, and auxiliary information. And for important heuristics, we have common input ownership and also change address detection. And in common input ownership, the attacker uh, assume that all the inputs of a transaction belong to one user, so let's say Alice. And then in the change address detection, the attacker tries to find the change address and then relate the change address uh, to the owner of the inputs. So we also have time correlation, amount correlation, and network layer information as side channel attacks in Bitcoin. And we also have flow analysis, transaction graph, users graphs, and in transaction graphs, uh, addresses are nodes and the transactions are edges and then we can create transaction graphs and also user graphs. We can relate all the users and uh, by obtaining auxiliary information from the internet, we can then uh, tag the addresses and create those clusters and there is wallet ex explorer.com if you go and enter your, a bitcoin address you can find uh, to which addresses it may relate we also have mystery shopper payment uh, where the attacker pays uh, actually uh, when the victim is a merchant uh, the attacker buys something and then the attacker will be sure that the address is the address belongs to the merchant and then Later on, if uh, the merchant uh, combine these addresses with other addresses, uh, all the addresses will reveal. So for address reuse, uh, we always have, we shouldn't uh, use address reuse actually as the, the attacker can uh, find other uh, transactions and relate the transactions to each other. We also have forced address reuse, uh, where the attacker pays often a small amount uh, to the target uh, and hope that uh, the victim will combine it with other addresses and then uh, the attacker can cluster the addresses. So here is a snapshot of Sarah Michael jo uh, paper, uh, where they clustered and tagged the addresses. And then for uh, our research, we ask users uh, which add-on privacy techniques in Bitcoin they are aware of. And the first one was mixing websites. And the second one was coin join. Uh, and we also ask them uh, which built-in privacy coins uh, are they aware of. And uh, do you think which one was the first one? Yeah, interestingly, Monero rather than Zcash. First one, Monero, and the second one, Zcash. And uh, and yeah, there are privacy solutions such as mixing and uh, privacy coins. And then uh, for CoinJoin, for instance, we have implementations in CoinJoin. Uh, users jointly create the transactions. Uh, with equal size, equal size output amount, and here is a real coin join transaction. Uh, but the problem, we also have coin join wallets such as Join Market, Wasabi, and Samurai. And the problem with the coin join is plausible deniability. So everyone uh, who 
looks at CoinJoin can immediately tell that it's a mixing transaction. So what we found, uh, and here is a quick recap, uh, the interesting point was uh, that some of the participants in our qualitative research uh, have a lack of knowledge of difference between custodial wallets and non-custodial wallets. And uh, let me elaborate on this point. Those participants were either unaware or didn't care about the risks of using exchanges uh, to manage their coins. Although some of them were aware of previous hacks to the well-renowned exchanges such as Madgox or Binance, they continued to use it. And taking the risk mainly motivated by the ease of using such traditional exchanges. And uh, also another factor was the risk of losing the keys in contrast of losing credential to access the website, uh, which can be easily recovered. So, uh, although, and, and, and another interesting point was, although some realized the privacy issues relying on custodial wallets, for example, the exchange may ask KYC uh, or correlate users' transactions. Uh, Others even didn't know that and didn't think about it. And uh, some of the participants assumed that blockchain is safe from safe from privacy perspective, and uh, as it uses. Uh, for as an example, P1 told us Bitcoin is based on encryption algorithm, which makes it anonymous. Or another user told us the users don't know to whom the public key belongs. It's an alphanumeric phrase, and all the identities are hidden in the network. Another significant point is that willingness to apply mitigation tools uh, to enhance the privacy in case of awareness. Uh, as an example, one of the users told, I have never heard about these privacy issues. Uh, if I knew about them, I would have researched possible solution to mitigate them. And uh, we found that while address reuse and auxiliary information obtained from internet have increased attention among our participants, uh, users are not aware about the most prominent heuristic, uh, namely common input ownership. And uh, we also found that some of the users this distrust of privacy tools, uh, and they, they believe that it is used by criminals, it is sometimes used by, for tax evasion, and as an example, one of the participants told that I'm not a big business person who wants to run away from taxes, so I have no reason to be anonymous. And let's summarize briefly what we found on privacy preferences. Uh, while more than half of the participants prefer to use privacy coins rather than privacy techniques on top of Bitcoin, those uh, who preferred add-on techniques expected future um, privacy enhancement in Bitcoin, uh, which is not re realistic in real f near future, and it would be implemented by wallets. Uh, and then, according to our study, users are willing to accept longer transaction time. But uh, half of them dismiss uh, the idea of paying extra fee for privacy. And uh, there are also uh, other interesting fact that the users who were aware of the distinguishability of coin join transactions uh, with the same output amount were not willing to use it. And then they favored alternative techniques uh, that uh, preserve indistinguishability. 
uh, where the transactions cannot be flagged by monitoring tool. So let's now look at the next slide, which shows the key points for the current Bitcoin privacy wallets. And based on our, our funding, although the, develop, the development of, uh, excuse me, the development of Bitcoin privacy wallets started around 2015, privacy wallets still struggle uh, to attract more users. And such wallets are complex and require minimum understanding of uh, privacy concepts and techniques. And on the one hand, current Bitcoin privacy wallets implemented conjoined with same output amount, which suffers from distinguishability. And on the other hand, the newly implemented indistinguishable techniques such as PayJoin or Wasabi Wallet 2 or Monero may be banned by governments. And in the interviews, we found that users prefer to use wallets that support different coins. Uh, thus, um, we cannot expect users to install different wallets for different coins, and even worse, installing additional wallets for their privacy as well as having to spend time uh, to learn their, function, their functions. And let me just run over the key points. We found participants have little knowledge about privacy enhancing techniques. Most of them were not informed about how these tools work. Even if they have heard about the techniques or privacy coins name, they didn't know what kind of privacy is provided or they assume that these techniques are too technical for, too technical for ordinary users. And uh, they just told that uh, they, they only buy and sell cryptocurrency for trading purposes. So uh, they, they have no idea about the technical uh, concepts uh, about cryptocurrencies. Uh, there were also negative understanding of privacy tools such as using them for criminals or tax evasions. And these problems and the consequences of the public availability of the data and the blockchain need to be educated either by wallets uh, or in social media. Uh, and we also suggest uh, uh, to have at least a uh, some sort of uh, private privacy, some sort of privacy uh, in Bitcoin by even using uh, some techniques over the Bitcoin rather than uh, using uh, the ordinary transactions. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. And uh, let me just finish with a question. If we don't improve the user's privacy, now, uh, can we handle the consequences in the near future when monitoring tools provide the user's information on the public?